Hello and welcome back to the spoiler cast, the show we talk about movies and we don't care about spoiling them. And yes, you are seeing this correctly. We are doing a video version today, at least if you're looking at it on, on YouTube. It's just like last week, we're still having technical malfunctions in my apartment. I, I don't have any internet, so I can't literally do anything. I can't upload. I can't edit since my editing software is on a subscription base. So, yeah, it's, 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 um, so it's we're doing complicated. It this way. We're doing it this way because it's the easiest way to upload it from my sister's apartment. And also, yeah, here's my sister and trusty co-host, Rebecca. Hello. And Hello. you are, of course, Tobias. My name is Tobias. And today, we're going to talk about a new movie. Uh, 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 we're talking about a new movie that is actually, actually pretty good, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe. I think you maybe. think the same. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. That's what we're going to talk about. Today, we're talking about Astro City. Yay! <laughs> I hope that live editing worked kind of fine. We'll live with it. We'll live with it. But yeah, we're talking about the new... Wes, Wes Anderson, Anderson movie. Asteroid City. Asteroid City. And it's kind of funny because uh, I consider myself a fan of Wes Anderson. But before doing this, I realized um, I haven't seen a, an, a new Wes Anderson movie in the last 10 years. The last one I actually saw was um, uh, Moonrise Kingdom. And even before that, I hadn't watched Darjeeling Limited, which was the movie he did before that, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I haven't watched French Dispatch. I haven't seen Isle of Dogs. I haven't seen uh, uh, Grand Grand Budapest Hotel. I really haven't seen any of the movies he's made in this this like hyper stylized way, which he's making movies nowadays. I mean, he's always had that, you know, that style. There's always been, you know, the the very symmetrical. Everything is symmetrical. Everything is in frames and everything. But it it really kind of kicked into high gear with. Um, I would yeah, say, exactly. Which one? Um, what was the one he did after? I mean, it was definitely there in Life Aquatic, but then Fantastic Mr. Fox kind of did that because it was all um, uh, stop motion, so yeah. it had to be a lot of like still frames and everything. But I guess Moonrise kinda, Kingdom I kind suppose? of started with Moonrise Kingdom, the very um, like sun sun bleached uh, uh, video and, and yeah, the the very the very symmetrical filmmaking. I but keep I mean, forgetting which one Moonrise Kingdom is. It's about it's the one about uh, the Cub Scouts, and you know he runs away with the girl, and they they. I never love. saw that one. Oh, it's a really good movie. But yeah, so I haven't seen the ones where he really goes hard on it, like French Dispatch and Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, so maybe maybe that colored my opinion on this movie a little bit, because I loved it. This is like a nine out of ten <laughs> for me, and uh, not just because of the symmetrical film. But for other reasons. But I'm gonna ask you, what did you think of it? I I can, I can see why you like it, and I appreciated it. But uh, it, it's too weird. The story, I I don't understand the story, at all. To be honest. <laughs> well, I did get a thought as we were leaving the theater, or oh. the movie theater, on the train. I was like, oh, is that the ending? Does that mean this was all a dream? Maybe. Well, it was a play. Yes, but like you can't wake up the, if you never fall asleep. Kind of that 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 stuck with me, and I was like, "Oh, is this yeah. supposed to just be like, oh, this is just a hallucination because you never went to sleep, or something?" I I don't I don't know. I'm kind of lost. I, I didn't. I think this is very like like all good art. It's very subjective, of course. And I'm sure my interpretation of it is not the right one. There is no right one. No, exactly, exactly. And you always, you know, you you bring your own. Um, your own experiences into how you interpret them. Of course, of course. Yeah. So for me, it was definitely uh, they hold the whole thing because they kept chanting in the end that you, you can't wake up if you have a fall, fell asleep. Yeah. Um. For, for for me that for me that had to do with like uh, 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 grief because a lot of the characters um, were kind of you know yeah they were grieving something cl- classic uh, Wes Anderson movie kind of outsiders weirdos Duh. yeah or, or or is it grief stricken. Um, or a combination of the both. Or the, yeah, <laughs> um, but the whole you know because, and that, that is like, like if if you never, I don't know. We're getting right into the, the, yes, the theme, the, I think. Because uh, that's the, the thing about this movie is sure it's stylized. The style is very 
pretty and and eye catching. Yeah, I the love bright the colors and the the very steady shots and uh, symmetry. The asymmetry sometimes. What? Because everything was kind of off center. Yeah, but there's always something in the center. Sure, but there was a lot of focus on the things off center as well. Oh yeah, sure. There's background details yeah. everywhere. Steve Carell or that uh, company man who kept showing up everywhere. Yeah. Just standing like off to the side. I love and when they had the, the, the window shots, yeah. there was always a sliver of the land behind them on, on left or right, depending yeah. on which window window they were filming. And you always had like certain well, the the, uh, the billboard kept coming into shot on the on the side, which was a billboard of a billboard. Mm-hmm. Both containing desert mountain thingies, which was the backdrop of the entire movie. Yeah. Kind well, of Inception esque. <laughs> you know, I think that 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 adds the theme because it's, you know, uh, these. I don't know how far we're gonna go without doing spoilers. Maybe we should do spoilers right away. To kind of, like, talk I think about we can the, do spoilers right away with this one because there's no like mystery. Yeah, there's no big twist. No, really. No. really. This yeah. is just. Straight up following them throughout the day or yeah. a couple of weeks like, or whatever it is. The plot is very simple. You have a bunch of people who have, for one reason or another, ended up in this city, Asteroid City. Most of them for the award thing. Yeah, they're there for award ceremony. Um, for, they're, they're for gifted kind of, children. Yeah, are, they're kind of like you know space camp. Yeah. Kids. And they're there because they've made some uh, contraptions and they're getting a grant. A, a grant and, you know, one of them's awards. getting a grant. Yeah. And, um, and they're all doing it in Asteroid City because it's it's the site of a... Uh, um, oh, Asteroid. Um, yeah. <laughs> asteroid. An Asteroid... What's it called? Crater. Crater. Thank yeah. you. And, then and the Asteroid actual is there, Asteroid. Yeah. Um, but as they're doing the ceremony, or one of the events of the ceremony, a UFO appears. Yes. It comes down, everyone's just sitting there, and it steals the Asteroid and leaves. And then there's... And then they're quarantined because the military is there because that's yeah. part of the whole But ceremony. like half the movie takes place before that happens. Yeah, the first act is all before that. Yes. And the second act is uh, uh, second, and, second and third act is shorter. Yeah, um, and that's because it's this setting up all the characters. And I mentioned this on the train. Like I said, our companion piece should be Independence Day. Although we've already done that, so we're not going to do that. Yes, but this is, in a lot of ways, <laughs> in a lot of ways, this is. Um, it has the same structure as a Roland Emmerich disaster movie. Bunch of characters, sure, um, who really don't know each other, but they come together because of this one event. Yeah, um, and they discover something about themselves. You know, there's, there's, you know, there's the grieving father character. There's yeah. the love interest. There's the, um, oh, the super smart kids. You know, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Dev Tomorrow. <laughs> or you know, oh, yeah. um, uh, well, super smart kid isn't it? But super smart Jeff Goldblum yeah, in Independence yeah, yeah, exactly. Day. Exactly. There's always that character as well. Jeff uh, Goldblum's in this Jeff one. Jeff Goldblum's in this one. <laughs> Uh, super smart though. Well, we don't. Well, know. we. Well, I mean, he built the thing. Spoilers. Well, I, well, you don't know that. We don't know that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and how it's this? It's this one event, and then there's the military is involved. Yes. This is there's this a is quarantine. this there's is sort a... of like yeah, it's a, it's an alien alien, it's an alien slash movie. disaster movie. Um, Very with, small scale. Though. Yeah, without all the action and yeah. explosions, even though there, there are, are two nuclear explosions in the movie, but we want to see two. Oh yeah, we only see two. That's true. But uh, you know, they're off in the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but still, the, there the are ground explosions. is shook. So this is kind of Wes Anderson's version of a disaster sci-fi movie. Yeah, it's just contained. Yeah, because it's a Wes Anderson. Movie. <laughs> exactly. It's all very, very symmetrical. Um, and I so that I mean, a third of the movie actually takes place like inside the crater. Yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't realize at first. A lot of time is spent in that crater. Um. That, so that's the plot, and it's, it's yes. them being stuck in this in the in the quarantine, trying to figure out what happened, and kind of you know figuring out each other and and yeah. dealing with that becomes themselves the thing. It's, and it's each actually other. about the, the people. Obviously. It's not actually about the alien. Because who cares about the alien? Just like they say, because there's a meta story around this um, about the man who wrote the stage play Asteroid City. Yes, this is where I get confused. Yeah, well. Um, cause the movie starts, the movie starts as an episode of the Twilight Zone. We have a man in same talking like, this is a story about Asteroid City. I it's thought not a real it was city. one of those, you remember, um, how, uh, back in the days, like War of the Worlds was a radio show. Yes. It's kind of that, right? Yes. They, they act it out, but they air it on radio. Yes. Even though there's actors and stage and shit. But no, this, the, the, the presenter here played by, uh, uh oh, Heisenberg, whatever yeah. his name is. <laughs> 
um, uh, uh, Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston, right? Yeah. Um, he's not actually. He's like a fourth wall breaking character. Yeah, because he's, he's not, talking. He's not there to us. Yes, he's talking to us. And the, but the, is he talking to the audience that is he, sitting there as well? There's Just no a, audience. Yes, there is. But we don't see it until later in the movie when Jason Schwartzman breaks out of his play and enters the black and white. Oh, okay. We do see the audience behind yeah. through the door. So is he talking to us? No, or the no, in- he's talking to us. Okay. Because the actual play is the movie we're watching, Asteroid City. Yes, which is why when he steps off the set, it becomes black and white. Yes, then all the black and white scenes are, are what you see. In, that's the that's a real world, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, see, see why this is confusing? No, but it isn't confusing. <laughs> it's it's um it's a storytelling device. Sure. And I think, honestly, it's really only there, um, first because he thinks it's funny. Obviously. Um, and then also can explain why the movie looks so weird, because it's yes. supposed to be sets. You know, it, it, it's, it's a quirk. But I also think there is there is there is one thing, and that's that's actually Jason Schwartzman's character, both his character in the the, the play and, and his, the, his his character, the actor who's playing the the I, character. I'm slightly annoyed that there's only one name here. He has two names technically. Yeah. Though I don't know if we get to know the yes, we do in the beginning. No, we only mention the, the names of the characters. Right. Yeah. But anyway, he um at one point. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> at one point, I'm he steps photos. off the stage yes. in the middle of a scene and talks to the director, who's behind the scene, of course, played by uh, Adrian Brody. Um, and he's asking, and he's, cause he has like six, six and a half minutes before he his, has next his, his next line. line yeah. So he asks him, what's it all about? What's the point? Yeah, and they actually talk about it earlier. Like he asks, why does he put his hand on the hot plate? Because he burns his hand for... S- for no apparent reason, he, he he deliberately puts his hand on a, a yeah a hot plate hot plate yes and that happens. Uh, they talk about it long before it actually happens in the movie. We know how the movie is going to end because they talk about early in the movie. They talk about spoilers: the alien stealing the, the asteroid. I did not connect yeah, it's that. Just in the, it's like in passing almost. Why am I not finding the actor that I'm looking for, which is annoying? Who? The guy who plays the the writer, Edward Norton. Yes. Conrad Arden. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Because I was under the impression that Conrad, well, Edward Norton and Adrian Brody was the same person at one point no. for some reason. He only writes. He doesn't direct. Oh, right, right, right. right. I, I, first, I assumed the writer directed as well for some no. reason. Anyway, okay, never yeah. mind. Never mind. Um, he asks, what's it all about? Because you know, you're, you're kind of like, what is this about? And like I said, earlier, before it actually happened in the play, in the movie, he asks, why does he put his hand on the hot plate? Oh, he, I doesn't, he doesn't really get an answer. Stop um, fiddling with that. <laughs> sorry, um, but I think it's because they don't have an answer. No, yeah, they don't really. But yeah, but that is, yeah, and that's why I think we have this uh, storytelling device of him, like uh, of this being a play, and you can actually ask. So things. he can actually ask the question. It's, it's it's almost like I think Wes Anderson might not have known himself. Like, why are these characters doing what they're doing? I'm not sure. So he, he this is he, me speculating. So sure. he wrote this whole stage play device around that, so he could actually ask himself that in the movie, even though he doesn't answer it. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's a, it's a, it's a way for us to like, oh, okay, so this it is a, it is a question because you think it yourself as an audience member, you're like, yeah, what is it really all about? And it makes you start to think about it and contemplate it. And for me, it helped me to actually figure out, like, because I was just looking at the movie, like, okay, so it's just a quirky movie. But then because he asked. I asked as well. And for me, then, I found a meaning in it. Okay, so what was the meaning for you? Because I didn't find one. Well, the meaning was, like, all these, like we said, all these characters, um, they may not have trauma, but they're definitely, um, like we said, they're stuck. Uh, you know, for one reason or another, they're kind of stuck emotionally. Sure. Um, and now they're also stuck physically. Yeah. So they can't keep moving on, which they're, all the characters are, especially the two main characters are uh, Jason Schwartzman and Scarlett Johansson. Yes. Um, he is a f- war photographer whose wife has uh, recently died. Yes. But he is kind of, they've kind of not, she's kind of been dead because she's been struggling with, I think it's cancer. They're just sick for two years sick, or something. Yeah. So yeah. She's been sick for two it's, years. It's the, the Hollywood sickness. Yeah, I know. The only Probably. Wives. Yeah. Um, so he, she hasn't really been a part of his life for the last two years, really. Yeah. It's 
kind of like in uh, in uh, in Silent Hill 2, where yeah, I don't know. Maybe you still remember. Also, Do you think it, I remember no, Silent Hill 2? You haven't even that, watched then. Silent Hill. No, I mean the, the game. Oh right, no, I didn't play the game. Oh, okay, okay, but there's also like a wife who is sick for such a long time that he like starts resenting yeah. her. Yeah, it's the same thing here. Like, because it's been so long. She's more of a burden, and you kind of exactly. go. Eventually, you go. Could you just die yeah, already, exactly. so you, I don't have you, to take care of you and the children? And you don't want to admit that, but it's you know, rude it's and, yeah, and it's, crude. <laughs> but that's just life. It's life. You yes. Know, yeah. You get sick and tired of people being sick. Yeah. So <laughs> he is. Yeah, he is obviously kind of. He's over it. He's he's over it, but also you know. He's feeling remorse for his emotions. And if, yeah, and, and that's why he's also not been able to tell his children. She's been dead for three weeks in the movie stars, and he hasn't yes. told them yet. Kind of weird to tell them. Well, you know how mom was almost already dead for two years. Now, now she's, she's actually dead. yeah, exactly. And you have and the of, kids are the, the daughters are young. They're like five, six, yeah, something. And then the Woodrow, son's like the son was, was 12, like 15, 13? something like that. Yeah. Um, Jake Ryan. I don't know. I, I recognize him, but it might be just because he looks like uh, Jason Schwartzman. Good, good casting. Very good casting. He looked a lot like Jason Schwartzman. Uh, he's been in the uh, in the. Uh, Oh, is it? Oh, and, uh, and Isle of Dogs. Yeah, I. A lot of the actors are he in plays Dwarf Two and Uncut Gems. <laughs> Who's Dwarf Two? I have no memory of that. <laughs> a lot of the actors are recurring actors. He works with a lot of the yes, same. Yes, he people. likes to use the same actors, even if he can just squeeze them in for like one scene. He wanted Willem Dafoe. He wanted Jeff Goldblum. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So that's why he's kind of stuck, and now yes. he is literally stuck here. Yes, in after City. the the. Incident. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson is the same way. She's like a an uh, actress, a film star, actress, um, who um, who has a very uh, like messy private life. Yes, which then um, mirrors it in, in the character she plays. She only plays like alcoholics, ab- abused wives, uh, and stuff like yes. that. Yes, because that's kind of how you know she has lived her life. She she even talks about like it go ba- goes back to her her, her father and her brother and her. Yes, like she's Which I'm not sure if that was actually true, if that was her acting. I mean, no, no, that's the thing. Like, she has devoted herself so much to acting. We don't, she's not sure who she is anymore. I yeah, mean, she even talks about killing herself, the way one of her characters does. Yeah, because later in the movie she, she is acts rehearsing out a scene, that. We, but we don't know that at first. We're like, oh shit, she killed herself the way she should have, <laughs> or the way she should. She said she would. So she's obviously struggling. She's emotionally stuck because she. She only knows how to act emotions. She doesn't know how to feel yeah. emotions. She even says that when she talks about uh, Grief. Her, her daughter. No. Well, she talks about something specific. She's never been able to act as someone who's grieving because she's never truly felt grief or yeah. something. Yeah. Something she's like emotionally that. stunted. Yes. Which Jason Schwartzman is as well. But they, they kind of For find each reasons, other in, yeah. in that. Um, at first, it's more of a, like, well, he's obviously physically because God damn it, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> if you're not, you're blind or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, I guess asexual could be a reason, but yeah, yeah whatever. Whatever. Not even they might find her attractive. <laughs> but then, you know, they strike up a conversation and since he, since he is, you know, still Shh. grieving his wife, he's not interested in her in that way at first. Yeah. Which lets her kind of let her guard down. And they start asking questions instead of just doing yeah. le- like being physical or something. Of course, then showing Tom Hanks' character, Stanley Zack, who is uh, the grandfather of the dead wife. No, the, well, the father, father of the dead of the wife. Dead so wife. So the grandfather of the, the children. Yeah. Um, and the, the only interaction he has with her is because he thinks she's... Uh, attractive. Attractive. And she's not really interested. No. Well, also because he's an old man. He's, he's much older. Man. But, you know... You and know, already she shows... has the attention of, of exactly. Jason Washington's exactly. character. Exactly, but it's, it was a good to like show that, yes. like, ah, that's how, usually how men react. Approach to her. her. And I mean, every time her name comes up here, everyone's like, okay. yeah, you know, whenever they mention Mitch Campbell, all the guys, oh, Mitch Campbell, oh, Mitch Campbell. Even some of the girls go, oh, yeah, Mitch, Mitch Campbell. Campbell. <laughs> it was so good. Um, but they, but then there's you know the scenes when they, when she's rehearsing her next play. She, that's kind of funny. She plays an actress in the stage play. Of yes. Richard City. Yes. She's an actress who plays an actress. So she's rehearsing scenes while she's rehearsing Astrid City. Yeah. It's very meta. I mean, it's not too bad, but I mean. It's a little bit, yeah. An actor plays an actor. It happens. But anyway. Um, and there's, <laughs> yes. you know, there's there's a scene, the, the suicide scene that they rehearse. Yes, the bathtub. Yeah, and he she asks him to actually, like, use, be emotion, your, use your emotions. He's like, my. 
rehearse it. Exactly. Why would I do it here? Why? Yeah. And I mean, it was very, very, very small because that's also a thing, even in his early movies, there's not a lot of emotion. I mean, there's not a lot of big emotions. There's, exactly. There's it's no very big outbursts of emotions. Very, but there are emotions. We have, Definitely. We have uh, the kid when he... When he actually gets told that his mother's dead, there's the one single yeah. tear. But you know, yeah. But it, you know, I have to, you have to stick to the symmetry. So you can't have people going like, uh, uh, yeah, no, no, you can't lash. But anyway, so he's just saying, but there's a slight zoom in, um, and he, he actually you can hear his voice cracking a little and bit. You see a little bit in the eyes. Yeah, and he's like, uh, and then he actually like he's supposed to smash the the shelves, but there's no shelves, and he just throws a book at the at the, at the yeah. lamp. And he flails a little yeah, bit. Yeah. That's the biggest emotional outburst we see anyone do in that entire movie. And it's him actually getting you know some closure with his wife. Sort of, yes. Metaphorically. Yeah, because he gets to and say the was, words he didn't say, really. That, that was, it was really small, but that was like... <gasps> it made me go like... <gasps> yeah, no, I thought it was very... Me. <laughs> for me, it was. I don't know. It did it for me. Impressed emotions. Maybe, I don't know. Um, that's, that's the thing, though, because I didn't... Even though there were definitely... Uh, so, but I was going to say, that's the point of the movie, though. I was gonna say, like, all these characters, even the, the kids are there, the super smart they're kids. finding more they're, about themselves. Yeah, well, they're, first of all, they're finding equals, because they're all kind of outcasts. That's and, I mean, uh, Woodrow Wood- and I'm Dinah even kind of fall in love. They do fall in love. Yeah, they, yeah, they do fall in love. I mean, yeah. They call it, the, it's his girlfriend by the end yeah, of the yeah, movie. Yeah, exactly. What do you do with the money? I don't know. Probably wasted on my girlfriend. Exactly. Because <laughs> um, they... They, they've been emotionally stuck and now they're with equals so they can actually express themselves. Yes. Um, or someone will understand you not think you're just weird. Yeah, exactly. Because that's kind of how they felt. That's, uh, uh, shit, what's her name? Yeah, which one of them? Uh, uh, uh Lilis, right on. Lilis? Uh, Who? Sophia Lilis. That was the Oh, the Shirley. Girl Scout. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, from X yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Dungeons & Dragons. Yes. Um, she talks about being bullied in school, I think, or something. Yeah. Uh, he throws rocks at her? Or was that uh, something, something else? He I don't throws know. something at her. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it's rocks. <laughs> yeah. But then, of course, you know, then, but those are really the, 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 the that's the main characters. Then we have, you know, the, the general and some of the other lawyers, like yes. the assistant guy. He doesn't have a name. <laughs> no, yeah. It's, no, he... <laughs> he doesn't have a name. He's just there. Yeah. Um, and the scene between Margot Robbie, um, the actress, yes, um, nameless, who was supposed still. to play the wife, but now she's only they cut her scene, so she's only in the picture. Yeah, uh, but he actually she actually talks to um, Schwartz. St- Schwartzman, Schwartzman, Jason Schwartzman, as he's asking what's it all about because she's doing a play in on the, the other, other building. Theater, yeah. yeah, so they talk on the balcony, sort of like they do in the movie, but like Schwartzman and Johansson does. Yes, um, it kind of helps him to. Understand and the character better because because the they reenact with, the scene that they cut yeah, well she sort of reenacts it because he doesn't remember it yeah exactly which is all about him like talking to her as a ghost in a dream in a dream yeah he's talking to his dead wife in a dream which is you know the, kind of the scene you need but it's also the scene you get with the suicide rousal scene yeah um, it just helped to cement it because the other characters don't really have an arc they, they're more set dressing yes like, even, um, um, I guess Tom Hanks has a little bit of a, an arc, but it's a tiny a one. Bit. He's he's accepting of his family despite the loss of his of his daughter. Yeah, I he suppose. never really liked the anchor, the one who like connected yeah, them. Because he was never a big fan of Jason Schwartzman. He just accepted, and, yeah, and exactly. also like because he's the father of his grandchildren, he will of course bring them into his home. And exactly, he can stay there for as long as he wants to. But now he he's just more, doesn't have to. But love him. By the end, he's more. Open, about open it. to it. He's not as he's gonna accept it the way you know they want to bury the mother's ashes there. Yeah, yeah the children want to. Yeah, yes. the children want to. But it's just one of three. Yeah, so there might be more ashes. I don't know. Yeah, did they divide? First of that... all, first of all, why the hell is her ashes in a Tupperware? Because they didn't. They didn't buy an urn. You don't have to get. An don't urn. you get like a more of a proper box though? Did he? That that's the salad bowl. With the lid, he brought his own know. bowl. <laughs> I think you. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's different. It's for aesthetics as well. Yeah, obviously. that too. Yeah. And it's the fifties. I don't know. Maybe they didn't. I mean, I've seen movies where they like use shoe boxes. So yeah, famously, Big Lebowski they used a exactly. cookie jar. Yeah. Um, or cookie tin, I suppose. Whatever. Um, box. Box. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, 
started thinking of Big Lebowski. Sorry. Um, but I feel like the writer has to have some sort of point in all this. Well, no, because that's once again. Because that's the separate story. Though. Yeah, yeah, but his his story isn't really important. He wrote Asteroid City. If the story is the characters in Asteroid City, um, he, you know, from from what we can tell and little we know about him, he doesn't have any problems with emotions or anything like that. No, I guess and not. He's, uh, the only thing is he's not sure. Um, he's he's not sure how to. Uh, how to really get to this point where the the people kind of awaken from their you know their emotions, from their sleep <laughs> from their emotional stun thing, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That's why he asks all the um, the acting students like help me like actually go to sleep and how how would you how would you do this dream <laughs> thing you know. Yes. And that's when you get to the whole you can't wake up if you haven't. And, and everyone home, that in that home. audience is actors who then play in Asteroid City. Yeah, that's why he hires them. To play. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the whole thing. What he means with you can't wake up if you haven't fallen asleep is that. Well, you literally can, first no, of all. Yeah, you literally can, of course. <laughs> but it's also like. Because. Uh, be, even if. I mean, they've, they've been. Like we said, the characters have been emotionally stunned for a long time or even like their entire life, like Lily yeah. and Johansson. Um, but it takes, you know, so they, they've kind of, they've kind of not, like, that's what I say, they, they're, they've been constantly awake, so to speak. Yes. Them, them stopping here and being able to actually stop and contemplate things in Asteroid City. Yes. Because the quarantine, that's them falling asleep. And then finding these connections between characters is them waking up. That's uh, how I see it. Just. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. So, in order to actually... Move on. Maybe you have to experience. You have to experience the bad to get to the good. Well, yeah. It can't just all be good. It has exactly. to be bad as well. You know, that's that's, that's part of life. Exactly, and that's the what I that's what I got out of the movie. At least. Um, I'm I sure think it was other too. It was too. I don't know. I I probably would have preferred it was just the play being the actual movie yeah. and not having the black, not and have white. The black and white. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that confused me. Too. Okay. Even though it added the, the the only technically one point where he was able to ask questions, because yeah. everything else, like the uh, the interaction between uh, Aidan Brody's uh, character as the director and his ex wife, uh, which I assume oh, was Hong Chao, yeah. yeah. Like what? What did that add? Well, it 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 shows that it's it's kind of showing how life imitates art and art imitates life because, um, I mean he they they say that. Yeah, he is separated from his wife. They're probably going to get divorced. Yeah, uh, they still love each other, just not not it's the same. Complicated, yeah. And he for the for the seven hundred and fifty eight showings. Yeah, he lives. He in lives the, behind the stage. Yeah, because the sta- the the wardrobe people washes his clothes, and the hair and makeup does his face and shaves him and stuff. And yeah, cuts his hair. They they, every, they fix everything. Um, and the only and, and the days when the theater is shut down for whatever day. Showing it, he lives in a, in a, in a hotel, in a hotel or nearby. Yeah, because yeah. he's you know it just shows that people are people are stuck. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, it's just another one who's stuck in some way. Yeah, um, and I mean, like I said, the the characters in the real world in the black and white they don't really have arcs. No, it's just to show that that's that's how people are. They're stuck in these situations. But that's why I think it doesn't really need to be there. No, but it was it was a way for the director and the writer Wes Anderson. To ask himself, what is the point? Probably yes. And he couldn't do that unless there was a breaking of the fourth wall. So he thought, where Jason I'll Schwartzman just, could ask yeah, the questions. I'll just break the fourth wall from the beginning. Just, yeah. Just, but also because then you can have a quirky uh, act two scenes, uh, four through yes. nine. You know, yes. He, he wanted funny. those title card yeah. thingies. He like he likes title cards as well. He thought, I want to make it a stage play. Yeah. Thing. It was probably just a stylistic concept. Like I said, it's, a lot of it was just a. Style, because um, that's a lot. A lot of his movies is style, but there is substance as well. It's never style over substance. No, uh, no, sure. It's definitely, but it's definitely style and substance are equally important to him. Yes, though um, the substance might be a bit convoluted. <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. Be, well, well, and that like now once again, I'm just talking from his earlier movies. Uh, 
big conjecture, me just speculating again. Um, because he feels like he could be a character in Asteroid City, but he is stuck. Oh, probably very restrained. That's probably. why everything has to be a certain Where? way. Otherwise, maybe people see that I'm really sad <laughs> inside, and I don't want people to see that. Ah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure. So he's, he's kind of you know, and you know, you like what you know. So yeah, obviously, we yeah. said that before. And I mean, that's the same with Royal Tenenbaums. It's all about people that are kind of stuck and can't really talk to each other. But it's um, more in a family. But then, but then they, they, yeah, they, they all, they, yeah, it's family dynamic. Um, but they're all now gathered in this one. Place. All the emotions come out. Same they have with, to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same thing with Rushmore, where Jason uh, Schwartzman has all these things going on. He's, you know, he's the he's the he's the founder of the chess club. He's he 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 he's in the school uh, acting. I play, haven't play seen thing. that one. Okay. So. I've, all... I've only seen Royal Tenenbaums, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and the uh, Life Aquatic one. But, uh, okay. Um, uh, he, he and does, I barely remember he Life Aquatic. All, but he does all these things at school. Um, because he know, needs to keep busy, basically. You know, yeah, he doesn't have anything else. But then he falls in love with one of his teachers, um, who another man he he talks to. I don't I don't remember. He, he, but it's that's uh, oh, those? No, he's not, actually not in this movie. <laughs> Is it? Um, oh wait, there's a trivia because the there's... Ghostbuster guy. Yeah, What's his name? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Bill Murray. Bill Murray, right? Because Bill Murray was supposed to be in this. Oh, okay. Um, but they had to. Uh, Place him with Steve Carell, apparently, due oh. to COVID nineteen. Oh, okay. Well, I think that's good, and actually. I mean, um, Bill Murray is really good in in Wes Anderson's movies, but I think Steve Carell would would, would work better, much more rigid. Yeah, and I think his 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 stature and look fits this character better in yeah. this movie specifically. It would have been more of a he's like, too tall and big uh, character. Because Bill Murray is always uh, yeah, and he's too tall. Yeah, that's it. He takes up too much space. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so they start fighting over this teacher. It's actually, oh. it's actually there's like emotions coming okay. out. S- same thing. In Life Aquatic, but that's all about. It, it's kind of a Moby Dick story because it's, yeah, right. That's yeah, what I remember. But because I'm... that's Steve Sisu is actually on like um, he's on a revenge like fueled hunt for a for a shark who killed his best friend. Right. That's that's why they go away. Not from filming in the documentary, they're just gonna kill that shark. And he just used the documentary as a cover up, sort of. Mm, yeah, no, he no, he just documents well, it's I guess like get some funding or something. I don't yeah. know. I haven't seen the movie since it was new, so I don't know. I don't remember. I don't um, know. but that's another thing, like like because you, you know revenge r- rarely I, I, like is Works a good out. thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's because you know in in the end, is that why you say revenge is a dish best served cold because everyone kind of loses on it? No, revenge is a dish best served cold. It's like if you if you let emotions take over, you're not gonna. Oh, okay, it's not okay, gonna okay, work. Okay. You, I, I, you better I be took very it as cold like... and calculated if you want to succeed. <laughs> you're both gonna end up dead. Well, that's that's <laughs> it. If a man who a man who uh, what is it uh, prepares to bury his enemy should just. Oh be right, yes, that's the one. It's gonna it's gonna just lead to bad things for you. Yes, as well. that's in the end. There, they all the characters. Well, I don't remember all of them, but they they kind of. Well, it's better just forgive and forget. Yes, that's what that last. About finding out about feelings, Wes Anderson is kind of a an alien <laughs> who is trying to figure out emotions. We talked Human about emotions. some other some other director. We talked about that, but he's like not really human. He's trying to figure out like what does it mean to be human. We talked about that at some other thing. Maybe I've just written about that in one of my letterbox reviews. I don't know. Yeah, because the only one I think I can think of that we talk about a director doing something is the one who sold his soul. <laughs> that was Tom. P- uh, uh, The other one, whatever. There's a clip on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you should check it out. It's from our Patreon episode where we talked about uh, 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 the meaning of life. Uh, What's it called? The tree for a dream. Yes, man. that one. There's no tree in that. You mean the fountain? Yes, yeah, the fountain. But we, we, we were supposed to talk about yeah, and mother and all that stuff. Yeah. Whatever that guy is called. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, sidetrack. So uh, yeah, that that's that that was my whole thing. And uh, like I said. I haven't seen a lot of the other movies, so I don't know if maybe this is something that come up, comes up every time, but this is starting to get like old for other people. But like, I haven't seen a movie of his in ten years. No, this was so refreshing, especially, especially for twenty twenty three, because it hasn't been like a terrible year for movies. We've seen good movies, yeah, a couple, but not, not, I mean, not like good, this, good. you know, 
quality. Of these. I mean, the best I've seen before this, from this year at least, um, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah. And that wasn't like a big like movie that, that shook me to the core. It was more like, eh, as is good entertainment. There's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, there's, there, there's, there's, there should be more. You know? Yeah. And there's been a lot of, we had to watch a lot of old movies to have like. To kind of fill out the blanks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because like, yeah. We saw like, cause the, the movies I've seen this year. Yeah, seen... We literally scroll through the Instagram to find this. So yeah, if I, you're I, wondering I, why we're looking at our phones. The best movies I saw World War Three, which is technically from last year. Yeah. And, but it's, and it doesn't have a release in 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 Sweden, so I'm counting it for this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, I counted I guess online. Jo- John Wick Four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So World War Three was pretty good, but then I watched like Best Man was terrible. Cocaine was Cocaine Bear was terrible. Cocaine was terrible. Yes, Cocaine, cocaine, cocaine is, terrible. is terrible. It's literally poison. <laughs> Um, Even for bears, you're snorting gasoline and and like caustic uh, uh, acids. So don't don't. Even for bears. Even for bears. <laughs> yes. I mean, That's the only was, thing you learned from that movie. Babylon was definitely like a movie that should have been good, but, but it, it wasn't. Just, it just it fell. It, yeah. it fell flat somehow. Well, the whale was too saccharine, too schmaltzy. Mm. Inside was pointless. Clock was boring. I didn't even remember inside. No, you haven't seen it. Oh, I, this is all the movies I've seen. Oh, you've seen, not yeah. what we talked about. Pope's Exorcist was fun. It was actually a pretty good exorcism movie. Did you watch that? I saw it. I mean, why not? But I mean, it wasn't the. It was just once. It was fun, disposable entertainment. Like movies, you know, stories or movies with, uh, you know, substance. Like there's a point to. We haven't really had any of those. No, a movie that, that isn't I have just seen. pure entertainment. Yeah. A lot of it's been just pure entertainment, which. It's fine, yeah, but like not said, nothing only. Wrong with that. You need more in between. Exactly. Like I, said, I thought Renfield was great. I thought Donald Dragos was great. I thought John Wick was amazing. But they're entertainment. But I want, you know, sometimes you want something more. And something that makes you think. Yes. Not just entertainment. Not just Marvel movies. <sighs> you want something else. You want Even the marriage story. Is... You know? Or you want... A step lower than entertainment. <laughs> Yes, if we're getting into that Many thing steps again. Lower. No, that's not. But well, we're not gonna. We're not gonna. I want to talk about uh, yes. Ashton City because I like the actors at least. Yes, I do love all the actors. I love the set. Yes, because that's also. This. I, I was. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was. I've never seen Tilda Swinton play someone like that before. Really? No, I don't think I have. Something. Someone so. Um. Um. I want to say demure. If that's the right word, like. She's not the big, the big imposing person in the movie. She's oh, okay, usually yeah. taking. She usually takes up a lot of space. Sure, yeah. No, here she's kind of a. Uh, Even though she's, she's the chief some, chief scientist, yeah, she's still just a scientist. Kind and of. She's also one of those characters that doesn't really have an arc, but she serves as kind of a. Um, Paul Plank. Yeah. Um, How's that in English? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's sort of like she's she's she serves as like a. Um, Jumping off point for yes. Wood, Wood Woodrow's character, when 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 he when he talks to the other kids and says that like uh, he doesn't really feel like uh, there's there's what's really the point. Yeah, um, and he's he's she's also someone who can answer his questions a little bit and then pose questions back to him because he's the one who notices the date, yeah, the the dots. Yes, exactly. Um, Which so she- I have to assume then because he said this is always this date. And she's like, I haven't thought of it. And then that's the day the alien comes. And then when yeah. the date matches up again, so it's he a says, signal the alien yeah. sends. And, yeah. and when he, it matches, and sa- I'm coming. When the alien comes back, he says, it's today again. Yeah. That's also that's also just thematically because they're stuck. Sure. They're basically in limbo. So sure. it's today again. It's, and that's uh, it's Groundhog see, Day. <laughs> that's why we see things happening over and over again. We see the same cop car chasing that uh, hot rod car yeah. again and again, and again. Because, I, I, like I said, that's not literally. That's more... Uh, figuratively, yes, showing that they're stuck. Yes, because because when they actually in the in the end of the movie leave, um, that's the first time we see the train pass again. Yeah, because it's a, the... except for the one time when it stops when there's the quarantine. Yeah, that's true. Okay, but it so passes through. Then. Same with the cop car is going the other way at the end. Yeah, to show that now they can actually they're going move back. On. <laughs> they're moving on. Go somewhere else. But that's also that's also, and I was I wasn't I couldn't really put that in my review in in writing because I, I didn't know how to formulate it, um, because even though these characters are like fundamentally changed after all this, they're, they're still the they're same. They're still the same in the end, and I think that's 
also to show that, that these kind of character defining moments in like in movies it's always the, <gasps> the big thing but in real life it you, doesn't change you no, to the core it just you have many of those moments throughout your life yeah so it's it's part of life exactly which makes it it mundane. doesn't change life it's just part of life yeah which makes it then mundane yeah part of everyday life but that's but it's not, not mundane in a bad way like it's everyday life and that's, that's, that's how it should be that's how what, that's what life is about these characters develop a very small mundane than character change through a very big and significant experience yes. because not everyone gets to meet and take a picture of an alien yeah but they kind of diminish the alien bit that's not the big thing no in the movie which is weird sort of because it is a big thing it's a fucking alien yeah it, it, it is a big thing but it's also like it's once again, that's coming back to why I think he, he kind of wanted to make his own little disaster alien invasion movie. Because those movies always end up just being about the guy and the girl falling sure. in love. Sure, yeah. Because, you know, even in, even in fucking Chris, in, in Ice Heart Christopher Nolan, <laughs> when, he, when he made his sci-fi movie, Interstellar, yeah, that's true. ultimately There's... was about love. Yeah, familial he's... love though, right? Isn't it no, between? love. Love in general. Oh yeah, that's true, um, that's true, that's true. That's true. But he's, I think he might be even more of a robot than Wes Anderson. <laughs> so the love part of Interstellar just was completely weird. Lost. It didn't work. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like, that's ultimately more important. That's, sure. And that's why also... Because that lasts longer than a random experience with an yeah. alien. And also that's why, because the alien only shows up two times, and it's combined maybe a minute that they actually see it. Minute so, and a half, maybe. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Two minutes, whatever. Because there's a slow descent in the first one. Yeah, so sure, the ramifications are big. But honestly, since it never comes back, it, it won't affect them. But the changes that came, you know, through the experience. Them, through the experience is what's important to it. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. No, that makes sense. Still a bit of a weird movie to me. Oh, definitely, yeah, but I mean,. Yes, it is weird. Characters shouldn't be this this wooden, stiff, and rigid. Like some characters, sure, but when everyone is, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. But that's like I said, that's his style. The only character who wasn't like that. There's two characters. There's the uh, kid who invented the jetpack. I don't remember his name. Oh, the Asian uh, boy. Cho, his name is Cho. The father is Roger Cho. Yeah. Uh, whatever that kid. Ricky Cho. Ricky Cho, yeah. yeah. Um, he looks so much younger in this picture. Maybe that's his little brother. Oh, okay. No, yeah. no, that's him. Oh, it is him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Ethan Josh Lee. Um, he manages, because of the quarantine, they can't even, like, you know, contact the outside world. They have to mostly keep the... Keep this, Info. This is secret. Yeah. But he manages to contact his... his Friend the, that, the, like, the, the school The editor paper? at the high school paper he yeah. works for. Yeah. And gets this out, of course, and, you know, Marshall Ford, basically. Um, and he, he actually has like a big, like, no, the world needs snow. He's banging his, his you know, like, he very, very fired up about it. Yes, for about a minute. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> and I also time. love in that scene, Jeffrey Wright, who plays the general, he gets a message, Tony Rebellori, of course, which is yeah. true, because all he does in this movie, he moves around microphones and gives people papers. And shreds them at yeah. one point. But he gets and a, reacts to uh, Scarlett Johansson's character. Oh, Ooh, you're Mitch Campbell. Mitch Campbell. Mitch Campbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but he, um, uh, yeah, he hands him a letter from the president. <laughs> it was just, that was also just a funny thing. Because uh, Jeffrey Wright's general character is very, general, what is it, Griff Gibson. Griff Gibson. He's very, you know, very rigid because he's a military man. Yes. But then he reads a notice and he's like, well, the president's upset. And he just throws the paper <laughs> like, look what you did, Ricky. You upset the president. You upset the president. And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about the president. That was something she said like, what? well, the president's upset. Look at you. It was so good. It was so fun. Honestly, he was maybe my favorite character. <laughs> I really like the general. Yeah, yeah. Because he obviously Chapter one. Yes. <laughs> his his speech in the beginning. He it was fantastic. That's, that's like but that's just a little character quirk. He obviously had other aspirations on being a military. Of course. He, he probably wanted, to, wanted be an actor. to be an actor or something. Yeah. So he his speech he, his speech was about his father and yeah, shit. Yeah, it was it was his life story in three short chapters. Very short. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> awesome. Well, just, that know, was the little, best little part court. of the entire yeah, movie. Yeah, very funny, though. Um, let's just flesh out the characters. That's good. 
And then the other one is uh, uh, Leif Schreiber, who plays the father of one of the other kids. The kids who, the kid who wants to... The uh, Kellogg. The Kellogg, yeah. J.J. Kellogg. We don't know what the J.J. stands for. Exactly. They want to, what's J.J.? What's that about? Uh, the um, kid who invents like a laser beam Yeah, the disintegrator beam. Thing. Yeah. yeah. An atomizer. Which um, is literally going to start war, and he's like, of course, it's a weapon. <laughs> it's dangerous, of course. It's a weapon. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't very. Um, he wasn't very restrained. No, he was just very. However, he had subdued. very. Yes, and he had, he had very few uh, moments to actually do anything. So yeah, those he's, few he's a, moments he's are a minor short character. and and kind of explosive, but they're still contained, obviously, yeah. because they're so short. He can't really explode. And I wonder, because the same I would say for Tom Hanks, because he plays the grandfather mm. of the kids, but in a calmer way. Yeah, both of those feels like like. I don't, know, I don't know if there's... They're outsiders. <laughs> well, a little bit. Because um, they're the normal people, I suppose. Exactly, I was going to say, they act more normal than everyone else. And I'm wondering if that is just because they refuse to be as rigid, as symmetrical as when Wes Anderson wants them to be. Or, or if, if he actually asks actually them won't. to be that way because they they represent like the normies. So I think they be. represent the normies yeah. more. Maybe. Because cause Tom Hanks' character, Stanley Zack, the grandfather, he's not really in the family. He's he's obviously kind of detached. Yes. He's a rich person who lives on a golf course, literally. Yeah. His uh, only connection was the wife. Yeah, the blood. Literally. And and it, it's it's almost like um, Jason Schwartzman's character is like, he doesn't really want to ask him for help. Because no, he yeah. knows that you won't understand me or my children. Because the children are all very strange. They, they, yeah, they feel more like his <laughs> children and then the mother's children. Yeah, I probably. Mean, from what we know. We don't really know what happened. No, but it feels like that based on how the how, how Tom Hanks' character is as yeah. well. Same with uh, Lee Schreiber's character. He's just the father of this child. He yeah. doesn't really have a lot to do with the child, obviously. Same with the mom. Not as much, but... Uh, is which Hope is, Davis? Um, yes, Hope Davis. They don't really understand their son. Well, that's uh, the do- That's not... No, she's the mother of... Um... Sophia Lillis. Yeah. Oh, who's the wife of... There is no wife. Oh, I thought... No, there's no. just... Every single um, of the, the, the smart kids only have one parent. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. I don't know if that's a thing or just because it's easier. <laughs> Too many characters. No. Because <laughs> um... there's a lot of characters, even though a lot of them are small. Yeah. I mean, we have Matt Dillon running around being like a tech. The engineer. Yeah, and fixing things. He's just in the background fixing things every now oh. and then. Or Steve Carell, the hotel manager, just literally standing in the background. With a glass of tomato juice. <laughs> what, what Juice preference? Uh, apple, orange, or tomato? Yeah. Um. Again, Tony Revolori. Re- Re- Revolori. Thank you. He's also just... He's just there. Yeah. Most yeah. of the time, he's just ad-libbing. <laughs> yeah. True. Already done. Yeah. Per protocol. <laughs> <laughs> of course, standard procedure. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Lee Schreiber then, that's also, you know, that, that's kind of to show uh, how these, these wunderkinds, these Wunderkind. brainiacs, yeah. as they call them, or calls themselves later on in the movie, how's the brainiacs. At first, they kind of don't like the name. Because he's, Woodrow his has it on mother shirt, called him brainiac. brainiac. And they're like, and the other ones were, were all smart, brainiacs, so, yeah. duh. But then they kind of call themselves brainiacs. They they're, are. They're, they're, and they're, they're bonding. Connected. Yeah, they're bonding. Anyway. Um, Through the weirdest game in the world. Yeah, we have the same name. They added, like, a detail at the end, like dot they, dot or something. They said out. Oh, out. out, yeah. Out. Was that when someone I think was, there was dead? Some, no, someone wasn't there, so they had to skip their names. Oh. Or something like that. Okay. Um, you know, what I was going to say. <laughs> so, but that's also a moment just to kind of hammer home that they feel like outsiders. Uh, Lee Schreiber's son. Ah uh, yes. Sure that is. Um, they, they, he, he keeps daring uh, his father to do like dumb shit. Like, will you, will you, do you dare me to eat this hot pepper? Do you yeah. dare me to push this button that says "Do not press" when he's in the hospital? Is, is it that dude? Uh, yeah. Yes. Or is it me? He doesn't have a name, name here, but he has a name in the movie. I know. Yeah. I don't Either remember. way. Um, JJ Jr. Or something. Yeah. Kellogg Jr. Kellogg Jr. <laughs> Finally, his father asks, "Why, why do you keep daring me?" Dare you something to do? Yeah, him things. and Steve Carell go like, but but yeah, why? Yeah, like, I I dare I. 
I dare you to dare me, or do you dare me to climb this cactus? And I said, no, don't. No, he's just dare me. Dare you to what right. this time? What? And he explains that. Climb, like, climb the cactus. Why? Why do you want to do dumb things, basically? Says, yeah. Because if I don't dare you to do, if I don't dare people to do something, I don't dare myself. I don't make people dare me to do things. It's like I don't exist. Yeah. You don't see don't, me unless I do yeah, something people stupid. People don't care about him, so he keeps doing dumb things just to get attention. Which probably is also what the the ray gun is. It's a dumb yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Though that one worked out that compared to um, um, pressing the button, climbing a cactus, or eating a hot that's, pepper. Yeah, that's that's paraphrasing, of course, because when he says it in the movie, it's, it's super like, oh, and you can see that in both Steve Carell and Lee Schreiber. They're like the realization. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. They actually sure. We dare you. Go for it. Yeah, yes, because you please. understand, and he is he has been profoundly neglected his entire yes. life. So it's like, oh no. And then it's like, do you dare me to climb the cactus? Don't. Yes. No, don't. <laughs> There's, no, don't. Do we this. can do other things. You're just going to hurt yourself. But that, those characters grow and they form, form a better they form a better bond between them. Uh, he does uh, still dare him, asks his father to dare him uh, press things, right? No, that's, uh, that's, that's before, before that. Sorry, that's before. yeah. That's right after the alien. Right, there is no other dare after the no, cactus. Because that's, he's now seen, they understand. Yeah, now he, his father finally sees him. Yeah. No. Oh. So that's just another like a, a big thing, a father and son like finding each other again. Yeah. But it's really just part of life. Yeah. So we move on from that pretty quickly. And then the movie ends. Right. Yeah. It's a it's an interesting movie. It's a little bit confusing at times. Yes. But it's uh it's it but, it's definitely fun to watch. Yeah. Because I did laugh. Oh yeah, it's very fun. Even though we were four people in the theater. <laughs> We laughed the loudest. Yeah, I heard some. I had one. A the other laughs. person behind yeah. us laughed once, <laughs> but I think they might have been. We were loud, so they were quiet, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we laughed more. Is that true? I don't, I don't know. They they seemed more pretentious. Oh, I thought they maybe just didn't get it. I don't want to say that. Oh, we got it, so we laughed more. But you know, no, what no, I mean? no, like, no. I think they like, were just eh, this movie. sort of like you were feeling when the movies were like ah, eh, this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They felt like they were like yeah, but they they felt like movie movie critics for some reason. Okay, I didn't I didn't really look at them. So I'm like, they had this they had this like the stereotypical in a film you have a movie critic or a book critic, you know the the, the thin scarf, uh-huh. oh, tight okay. jeans kind of thing. <laughs> well, it, I mean there wasn't a lot of people in like not the physically, yeah, but like that's like, what this that's is not the... going to be like a box office hit. No, but if anyone's going to go watch this movie, it's people like that. Yes, because it's it's a Wes Anderson movie. It's artsy. And it is, it is, with with the style and everything. This is this is super pretentious. Oh yes, but in a good way. It's a yes. It's but not like, pretentious like, in the annoying way. No, it's not mother, <laughs> where it's pretentious just for pretension's sake. Exactly. This is just. It looks pretentious without. Yeah. Actually, being pretentious, I suppose it just looks pretentious. It is a little pretentious, a little but it's not wrong to be pretentious as long as there's a point with it. Exactly. We've, we've talked about that before. There's nothing wrong with being pretentious. It just has to have a meaning. Um, also, a very big plus. This movie's under two hours long. Yes. Despite having so many characters who actually take space and place and yeah. have moments, I mean, you have the fucking school kids and the uh, teacher. Um, is that Melanie Hopper? No, 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 no. Uh, where is she? Maya Hawk. Oh, was that Maya? Maya Hawk is the teacher. Is she that tall? <laughs> yes. I thought she was like a teenager. No. Oh, she's that. Old, you know, this is her first adult role, though. I think. Yeah, I think because I've seen her as Proper a younger person. Yeah, but she's still movies. a young teacher. She's oh, not sure, like sure, the sure. parents' age. Oh, we we'll to talk about that though. Like about oh sort of, the kid, the yeah, song. The, yes, and I want to talk specifically about the cowboys. Yeah. Oh who get yeah. Stuck in the town. Ooh. I I think that's also because because like we said, those are more like ancillary characters. Yeah. You know, we don't have a big arc for any. Obviously not for the kids. Not really for the teacher either. She's, no, no, no. She's kind of rigid because she like her her. Uh, well, she doesn't know what her teaching else to do. plan kind of falls apart because she's stuck in the middle of this town. Yes, um, and I mean they're railroaded by the fact that the kids are obviously going to ask questions about the alien now. She doesn't know anything. And she about, can't yeah, answer anything. Maybe we're supposed to talk about the planet. Then she doesn't know anything. Yeah, yeah, she knows as much as them. She yeah. was just there. That's all she has. So she doesn't. She doesn't have a big one arc, but it also but it does show that because. There's like a, a minor romance between her and, and the cowboy, friend, yeah. uh, who's one of the cowboys. Montana. Montana, right. And how he kind of adds this kind of um, this kind of all shucks mentality, very like down to earth. Yes. Which is funny, down to earth. 
Yeah. Um, kind of has an answer <laughs> for everything. You know, it's old school kind of cowboy character. Yeah. And there's a classic like. Wild West, she's the teacher in town, he's the cowboy, comes in yeah. and disrupts her order and makes her realize that life is more than boxes. Yeah, that's why they're dancing in the end. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is just a nice little touch. Yes. Of like, like, yeah. A little side note yeah. kind of thing. Also, Rupert Friend speaking with a cowboy voice. Excuse See, I'm me, not sure I, I love Rupert Friend. Freak that is. Uh, for me... His, like I uh, recognize the face, but I can't place him in a in a in a role. Well, I always think. Well, first of all, yeah, I played Eighteen Forty Seven in the Hitman movie. I never watched. But that. for me, he's always going to oh, be. Oh, he's in Infinite. He's oh. going to. For me, he's always going to be the guy in uh, uh, or the the therapist or whatever you call it in Start Up, which is a really good movie. And he's done a bunch of other stuff. That as one. Well. Yeah. Oh, he's so good. That's a good movie. Yeah, I think I've only seen his picture. Yeah, I've, oh, I've seen him in very few things, but I always love him in the things he's done. Little, the little things he's done. Um, Either way, it's like it's like him and um... yeah. Oh shit! No, wait, there's another actor. Who I, who I Plays, good, for example. Though... Either way. Oh no, I can't remember. Whatever. Him and someone else. Yeah, he was he was great in this movie. I love yeah. seeing him in movies. Yeah. Um, I like the whole little side story about the kids and, and was it Billy who ended up smoking and shit? Yeah, because he wants to be a cowboy. So yeah, hang out, he hung up. Had like two guns holsters yeah. and si- oh, through the cigarette and firing. Yeah. So that's cute. Just, and that just adds a little flair. To the Alien who lives up above. <laughs> 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 Fucking amazing song. Yeah, that's also sort of probably some sort of theme. How about you know? Jesus. Yeah, religion, <laughs> religion versus like now that you've seen aliens. Because they do talk about religion in the beginning. Because because Le- it was about leash. Jason Schwartzman's family, the mother and the children are... Um, Episcopalian. Yes, and Schwartzman is agnostic? Agnostic, atheist, something, sure. yeah. yeah. So they, there's obviously, they're supposed to be religious, but since the mother died specifically, and since they're all very um, different, yeah. they're not very religious. They're not, no. not normal religious, classic religious, I don't know. And, they really kind, of, and it kind of clashes with... Uh, the grandfather. Well, no, the grandfather is, is religious. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I mean, what do you mean, how they're all like they're like scientists. They're, yes. They're so well, love well, the, science. The daughters are fantasy, I suppose. Yeah, they're all yeah. what was it? They're, they're fairies, vampires, and, and zombies. Yeah. Um, no, Wonderful. But, no, but I mean, <laughs> but I mean, like there's the milk. clash between science and religion. Yes. And like, how do you, how do you, how do you explain <clears throat> religion when there's li- like. There's Heaven is full of aliens. Yeah. So, so I, thought God, I thought God was up there, but no, no, now it's actually a universe full of aliens. Exactly. It's almost like they're questioning God when there are aliens. Existing. So there's a little bit of that as well, but, but it's I, didn't, tiny. I didn't focus on that. No. Yeah, yeah. That's just a side note. I'm sure there's going to be lots of video essays about that in the future. Oh, like, yeah, probably. The hidden meaning of religion in uh, Asteroid City. How Asteroid City is actually a really religious film. Yeah, because you know, yeah, Jeff Goldblum was uh, Jesus. Yes. Well, yeah, he is a Jesus character. Sure. He, he makes all the. Is it twelve characters? Twelve main characters? Twelve apostles? No. No, no. Then now I'm just One, spitballing. Two. I mean, depends on how you count them as main characters, I suppose. Augie, Midge, uh, I guess no. The kids, Woodrow. The kids, five kids. Yeah, but who's the next one then? Because my hawk is in the main character. Steve Carell's in the no. main character. No, but they're in the story. Sure, but they're not like they're no, no, not I'm just disciples. I just threw that out. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm also, kidding. question, just random. The first time we see the alien, that's stop motion, right? Yes. That's a doll. Yes. But then we see Jeff Goldblum in the suit because he looks chunkier. Bigger, yes, of course. This is pencil thin because it's a, yeah, it's a doll. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I when just, we just see needed him, to confirm that. <laughs> when we when you see it's stop motion. Yeah, that's true. And then you see him uh, walking theater students yes. we're talking about you can't wake up if you don't fall asleep the ending there that's him in the suit I yes yes so. yes Cause or there was a stunt still... performer sure but it, it's a human it's not a doll because I think it said there was an alien stunt performer and it was a woman so maybe he was only in the scene where you actually see his face the other time it was the, the <laughs> so it was a person. little bit skinnier at least yeah I don't know, maybe, I don't know. His, his shoulders are too broad yeah um, there's the... a lot to, to look at in this movie yeah so 
I got I to gotta ask you, because sometimes when we have these kind of conversations, do you like it better now after having talked about it? Yes. Oh. I'm still a little bit confused. Sure. And I'm not going to say it's 9 out of 10. Okay. It's uh, it's average slightly above. Okay. I mean, it's definitely not bad, but it's not a movie I'm going to rush to watch again sometime oh, in the future. That's what I was kind of like smiling about. I might have train. to watch it one more time at yeah. least to properly understand it now. You kept asking why I was so... Giddy. Goofy giddy. Because I like, immediately wanted to go see it again. You know, I don't. Not it's immediately. Just, I just might a... rewatch <sighs> it for, for like processing purposes. Sure. But I used to, I say that sometimes and I don't rewatch a movie ever. I even say that about movies I like. I mean, I haven't watched uh, Maverick properly from start to end again since I saw it the second time in theaters. Well, I haven't seen it. I've only seen it once. And I love that movie. I do have rewatch the ending sometimes because my dear boyfriend, <laughs> who is in the background, watches it constantly. And when I see the hug, I still cry. Because I love the hug. It's beautiful. They accept each other. <sighs> they let go of the past. I'm never going to let it's go of It's sort of the that. same as uh, Astro's Eve. No, they're, they're, no, They're emotionally no, stunned. No, I'm no. kidding. You did not diminish the power hug. I'm not diminishing it. However, we are ending the episode here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> We're rounding we, it we, off here. We've talked a lot about the movie. I just, I just want to say, I thought it was amazing. Like I, I thought said, it was great. Like I said, it might be because I haven't watched his latest, his latest movies. Movies? 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 Such a newbie. Um, I'm going to check them out now. Because, I, I I mean, I've had Grand Budapest Hotel on Blu-ray for like, I don't know, five years? Yeah, my petition is that we watch Grand Bud- Budapest for uh, the patron episode. Yeah, it's just never, I've just never had like, oh, I want to really want to watch it. This kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, now I'm like, maybe I just really should watch it. Maybe they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've heard they are, but I'm just, I don't know. So if you want to listen more to us about uh, the dissecting Wes Anderson, I suppose, yeah. check out the Patreon episode. Um, if you know, and when we manage to get it out because of the internet issues, we'll yeah, we, see if, how we work yeah, around Yeah, it might be delayed. We'll yes. see. Hopefully I can get my internet back in the next couple of days so we can just do it regularly. Yes. Um, uh, and, I can, and I can say for next week, uh, we are supposed to do The Flash. Yes. Um, but I'm saying, like, if, if it's this... Way. Uh, if it's too much work. Like, this, too much work. Because it's going to be a lot of work now to get this up. Yes. Filming it, it's not hard. No, no, no. This it's everything thing. else. We might just do that. For, we might just save that episode and call it, like, a summer break. Yeah. Because this is too much work. And then we do... We, I you I realize like how severely crippled you become when you don't have internet nowadays. Yes. At least not on your computer. I have it on my phone. It's so. not the same. No. Not but either way. Stuff. We are gonna get the uh, the Patreon episode out because that's easier. Sure. Um. So yeah, check it out on patreoncom slash do not make a scene. Whereas for just three bucks a month, you get the extra episode every week. Uh, you get commentary tracks. You get some exclusive videos. You get to uh, uh, request movies we talk about. Yes. We recently did an episode on the 1971 Japanese horror comedy Hausu, which was a request from Danny Del Gaiso, one of our. I know how patrons. recent that was. This is actually a few. Well, that was a while ago, ago. But, uh, you know. Um, so if you want us to watch some super weird ago. stuff, <laughs> terrible movies, great movies, doesn't matter, just tell us. Yeah. That's patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Other than that, um, you know, subscribe to the YouTube, check us out on the Spotify. Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. I just want to say, yeah, thank you so much uh, for listening, and we'll see you whenever we upload another one, next one. But until then, have a good one. Bye. Bye. Oh, I forgot to do the outro music. Whatever. Bye. Bye. Bye.